When we were picking out the parts for a 70k PC build, we had to choose a graphics card and I went with a 2060 Super. AMD though does have a couple of offerings in that segment, the 5700 and the 5700 XT. So how do they hold up compared to the 2060 Super? Could I have gone with either of these cards instead? If you were building this rig today, should you probably go with one of these instead? Would they offer better value for your money? Well, let's find out in today's video. Hey guys, Ash here from C4 Retech. And if you do find this video interesting, if you do like what you see here, go ahead, subscribe, turn on notifications, share this video, hit that bell icon, and let's now get this video started. Okay, so let's dive straight in with a few gaming benchmark scores. First up, we have GTA 5, everybody's favorite. Even at 1080p Ultra, the average frame rates here are well over 100. The 2060 Super has the lead in here with the average frame rates hovering around the 150 mark. The 5700 XT is only a bit behind. And while at lower frame rates, the 10 FPS gap might mean a lot, at 120 plus, 137 FPS is just as good as 147 FPS. The 5700 is a lot behind these two though. Next up, let's take a look at an eSport title like CSGO. Like GTA 5, the main limiter here is gonna be the CPU and not the GPU. So I went in expecting really high frame rates on all three cards. And as we can see, the average frame rates here are once again really high, 240 FPS even on the highest detail levels. This means that at least at 1080p with a Ryzen 5 3600 and 16 gigs of RAM, all three cards should have no problem even if they are paired uh, with a 240Hz monitor. Moving on to PUBG next, we have average frame rates of 120 plus on both the 5700 XT as well as the 2060 Super. Do note that these are at stock speeds and we can get 5 to 10 FPS more uh, with such titles with a simple boost in power limits. The 5700 also does decently averaging over 100 FPS, but the top two cards begin to pull away further uh, once we introduce heavier games. The 0.1 here is really low for each of the cards uh, that we have on our list, but that doesn't reflect, uh, reflect that the entire gameplay was jerky. PUBG does have some issues with visual assets popping in, which means the game does stutter for a split second even on higher end hardware like this. On to Borderlands 3 next, this is a title that favors AMD cards and we can see that here with both the 5700 and the 5700 XT pulling in good numbers. The 2060 Super still holds on to the middle ground though with a respectable 85 frames per second on average. Okay, we've seen an AMD favored game. Let's now move on to RTX enabled games. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is first and this was benchmarked at Ultra. The 2060 Super does really well. Even with ray tracing on, it manages to pull in a, a 110 average uh, for FPS. The 5700 is close with 109 FPS and the 5700 XT obviously takes the lead at 121. Do know that none of the AMD cards come with ray, tra ray tracing hardware. So you don't get real time particle effects and dynamic shadows. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a really well done version of ray tracing where it doesn't affect uh, frame rates much but still adds that extra layer of sheen to the graphics fidelity. So the fact that it performs almost the same with RTX is definitely a huge pro. Next up, we have Control. The ray tracing is quite intense in this title which is why we did two runs with the 2060 Super. One with RTX on and one with RTX off. With RTX on and all settings cranked up, Control managed to barely crack the 50 FPS mark. But with it turned off, it was breathing right down the neck of the 5700 XT. What was interesting to see here was even with RTX on, the 0.1 remained over 30 FPS on the 2060 Super, which means that the gameplay overall was smooth with consistent frame timings. Now, games like Control are actually pretty playable even with lower frame rates and it does look incredibly cinematic with RTX on. But the thing is, unless you really have an eye for detail, it might all just look the same to you. So as we head into our last game for today's benchmark, Red Dead Redemption 2, what are the major takeaways here? Well, if you're looking to play the most demanding games out there like Red Dead Redemption 2, that too at ultra settings, then the 5700 XT should be your choice. On average, it does better than the RTX 2060 Super, and this is one prime example where it has managed to breach the 60 FPS mark, while the 2060 Super is at 57 FPS on average. 
As most of us know, 60 FPS is often considered the threshold of playability, so averaging above that is a big deal. As far as the 5700 goes, we wouldn't really suggest going for it since at the upper bracket of that price range, you might as well be heading for the 2060 Super that offers significant frame gains. Okay, so let's wrap this one up with a few ben benchmark scores. Starting with Fire Strike, we see that the 2060 Super actually ends up at the last spot. The 5700 and the 5700 XT both score above it. Now, this was kind of surprising as I expected the 2060 Super to do a little better here. Moving on to Time Spy, and here we can see that the 5700 is at the bottom with the 2060 Super in the middle and the 5700 XT at the top. Now, on average, this is the trend that we've seen with most games. The cards we've used here are the Gigabyte Gaming OC editions of the 5700, 5700 XT and the NVIDIA 2060 Super. As the names imply, these cards come with a bit of a factory overclock and really beefy coolers, a couple of 100mm fans for the 2060 Super and three fans uh, for the 5700 and the 5700 XT. Thanks to them, the thermals for the most part were in control, but in general, the 5700 XT ran the hottest out there. So conclusion time, what it all boils down to is the price to performance ratios. If you're looking for a graphics card around the 30 to 32,000 30 rupee mark, then the RTX 2060 Super is the best bang for your buck. Ray tracing isn't a must have feature yet. And while the NVIDIA drivers have historically proven to be better and more stable, AMD at least so far have kept the 5700 XT running smoothly as well. So is the extra 5 to 10 percent worth the 2 to 4 thousand rupee premium you might end up paying uh, for the 2060 Super? Well, in our mind it wasn't since we found the 2060 Super at a great price and at that time the 5700 XT was almost 4 thousand rupees more expensive. That plus the addition of RTX and the ease of use of NVIDIA software features meant that we preferred Team Green for a build. Depending on the prices uh, at, the, at the moment of you building your PC in your local market, you can choose to go either Team Green or Team Red depending on what makes the best bang for your buck for your build. Uh, the 5700 is really out of the picture at this point unless you find it at a huge discount somewhere say at 20-25 thousand rupees or something. So that's about it from my side. Now I want to know what you guys think. Are you going to go team red or team green? Leave a comment down below. And now it is time I bid you adieu. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on what you felt about this video. Subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4E Tech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.